Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another new mystery in regards to fast radio bursts, also known as FRBs. With a new discovery coming from the iconic FRB that was discovered back in 2012, the one currently referred to as FRB 121102. And so in this video I wanted to discuss exactly what the scientists discovered and what implications this discovery has on our understanding of these unusual phenomena. First, quick reminder. Fast radio bursts, just like the name implies, are extremely fast, usually just lasting a millisecond, and are bursts of energy in radio frequencies. And one of the main reasons we've only been able to discover them in the last decade or so, and the reason why nobody knew about FRBs until 2007, is because the technology was just not there. For example, today we require very very powerful graphic cards and extremely powerful computers in order to process a lot of these radio emissions in real time. And so in order for us to be able to process and catch a lot of these extremely fast radio bursts, we do require very powerful computers which just did not exist back in the days. Which of course led to a lot of other incredible discoveries in radio astronomy, many of which we've discussed on this channel in some of the previous videos. But as of today, FRBs have to be the most mysterious and probably the most poorly understood phenomena. And one of the main reasons why they're so poorly understood is really because nobody actually knows what forms them. So, at least in theory, some of them could be formed by various types of magnetars, very, very highly magnetic neutron stars. In this case, any kind of an eruption from the surface of a magnetar on the way out will most likely also interact with the magnetic field of the magnetar and thus produce certain radio waves. And because all of this happens extremely fast, this is one of the ways that fast radio bursts could be potentially created. The discovery from just under a year ago of a magnetar here in the Milky Way galaxy that was emitting both X-ray bursts and fast radio bursts sort of proved this idea. But a lot of other FRBs seem to be very different from the FRB detected coming from the Milky Way galaxy, which of course implies that these phenomena could be generated in a lot of different ways. Nevertheless, quite a lot of amazing discoveries have been made in regards to FRBs, with many of these discoveries helping us sort of get closer and closer to the final answer of their origin. For example, one of the recent calculations in regards to an average FRB suggested that an FRB produces just as much energy in one millisecond as our sun does from the entire surface in approximately three days. Although we also know that, generally speaking, the FRB energy does seem to vary quite a lot. So, for example, the one from the Milky Way galaxy, in comparison to some of the other ones from very distant galaxies, was actually extremely weak. Whereas some of the ones from distant galaxies billions of years ago seem to be extremely strong, producing way more energy. We also know that, for some reason, some of our bees only have happened once. Whereas a few of them discovered so far have been actually repeating FRBs, they've been occurring once in a while. And there are at least two major FRBs that have a very predictable pattern. There's this one FRB we've discussed over a year ago that seems to have an extremely precise repetition pattern of approximately 16.35 days. When it was originally discovered, this actually blew everyone's mind because nobody expected anything like this. But a little bit more recently, another really famous FRB that I showed you previously, the one known as 121102, has also been found to have repetitions. It seems to have a pattern of approximately 157 days. And more specifically, it seems to stay active for approximately 3 months or about 90 days, following which it stays completely silent for exactly 67 days. But exactly why it does so and the actual explanation behind these patterns at the moment is beyond our explanation. But the last two years have been extremely productive for detecting various FRBs, with this year 2021 being particularly lucky for a lot of different scientific teams. Mostly because a lot of radio dishes out there started to actively look for fast radio bursts and tried to actively discover them using various surveys. One of the most famous and I guess one of the most sensitive surveys right now is the one conducted by the extremely large telescope located in China the telescope known as FAST, 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope. Since the demise of Arecibo Observatory, FAST telescope has basically become the go-to telescope when it comes to radio observations, and being the largest and the most sensitive radio telescope, it's been really successful at detecting a lot of different stuff. In June of 2021 alone, it detected approximately 500 different bursts. 
But very recently, in October of 2021, the scientists using the telescope reported something that's basically record-breaking. Something that you can learn more about from this paper in the description below. Back in 2019, this telescope collected a lot of data coming from the exact galaxy where FRB 121102 is located. The galaxy located approximately 3 billion light years away from us. And by analyzing the data representing approximately 47 days of observations, the scientists detected 1652 FRBs coming from this region. Specifically the exact same spot where the original FRB was detected as well. And these 1600 signals were detected in just about 59 hours of total observations. With at least one hour during the observations being extremely hyperactive, 122 fast radio bursts occurred during that hour. That's basically one every 30 seconds. But despite this detection, once again, still no explanation for what exactly is happening here. But because of this observation and because of the number of bursts detected, this allowed the scientists to sort of narrow down some of the potential candidates. For example, every single one of these bursts was extremely highly polarized, approximately 500 times more polarized than a typical FRB. Polarization of light in this case refers to the overall twisting of light as it travels away from the object. In this case, it's believed to be caused by extremely powerful magnetic fields. And because magnetars generally produce most powerful magnetic fields, this is sort of why this could be one of the potential explanations. Or maybe some sort of a really powerful black hole, or possibly some other extremely magnetized pulsar. For example, a pulsar traveling through an ancient asteroid belt has a potential to produce some of these signals. Basically, each of the asteroids, as it hits the surface of the neutron star, might be able to produce these fast radio bursts. We've discussed this mechanism in one of the previous videos. But this would unfortunately not explain the periodicity. Why exactly does this happen only for about 90 days and then stay silent for about 67 days? Well, one explanation here is in regards to this being a binary. Maybe the neutron star or a magnetar is orbiting some sort of a massive star that once in a while covers the magnetar and so we're unable to see what it's doing. But in this case, we should maybe see some other periodicity. So basically, if this is an orbital system where things are orbiting around one another, there should be some other patterns and some other periodicity in some of these bursts that we've detected so far. And so the scientists behind this recent paper did exactly that. They took all of these over 1600 signals and then they tried to find out if there's any periodicity or any patterns in between the various bursts that were detected. And, well, unfortunately, they haven't found anything. There doesn't seem to be any pattern or any periodicity, and the signals, for the most part, seem to be kind of random. Which also suggests that any kind of an alien explanation or some sort of megastructure is also out of the question. But how exactly did they come up with this conclusion? Well, the reason here is pretty simple. If this is a magnetar or a neutron star or a pulsar, it's going to be spinning really, really fast. And so basically it sort of acts like a lighthouse. And because of this, if it's spinning and if things are hitting its surface, we should be seeing the same repetition, same periodicity produced by the effects of the spinning surface. But nothing was detected coming from this object, even though the data represented approximately 59 hours. And because of the lack of periodicity coming from this object, the scientists now believe that this is probably not coming from a magnetar or from a neutron star even though it's coming from somewhere where the magnetic fields are extremely powerful and something that does have this longer periodicity of 157 days. Or, in other words, this is now even more mysterious than before. It seems to be extremely powerful, there seem to be a lot of these bursts formed pretty much every single minute, but whatever is causing these bursts is more or less beyond our current explanations. And remember, these are really powerful events. These are very, very powerful bursts, and some of them happen at least twice a minute. But what can be possibly causing these? At the moment, nobody has any explanation. The conclusion from this paper is that it's very likely not magnetars. And that was, of course, our first primary explanation. And interestingly, a few months ago, this other study we've discussed that should be popping up somewhere right there has used these pictures from Hubble telescope that were able to trace some of the FRBs to specific locations in various galaxies. And here too, the scientists established that the locations suggested this was probably not coming from magnetars either, even though some of them also were coming from very highly magnetic environments. Which means that this mystery has now intensified. 
it seems to be even more unexplainable than before, with one of the mysteries being what exactly is producing these ridiculously powerful magnetic fields if it's not a magnetar. Which also means that we're back to where we were a few years ago, having absolutely no idea what's going on here. But this is of course why it's so exciting to follow these new studies and why I still believe that it's basically the golden age of radio astronomy. We're discovering so many new incredible mysteries and all of them are coming from various radio telescopes. You can find some of the other radio mysteries in some of the previous videos. Anyway, there's really nothing to add because nobody right now knows what's going on here. But once new studies come out and once someone has at least some idea, I'll make sure to follow this up with a future video. Until then, check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel or Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye-bye.